Welcome to Ann Arbor, Michigan, the Dominican Sisters of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist, and this is coming to you from our own studio here because we have something very special that we want to share with you. I am Sister Joseph Andrew Bogdanowitz, and if you've watched any of the podcasts, you already know that I'm the vocation director for the Dominican Sisters of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist, and that God and His goodness and mercy is really blessing us with many wonderful vocations from all over the country and beyond. But today, I want to share with you a very special friend that I have, Allison Barrick. And she's here because it's very important that she be here today because she's going to ask some questions because she's also discerned her vocation. And um, she also is in possession of something very special (laughs) we want to share with you. A book called And Mary's Yes Continues. And this book is new, hot off the press. And it is so good to help with vocational discernment that I never leave home without (laughs) my own copy, you see. So Allison, since you helped with the layout and many of the things of this beautiful book that's just now coming off the press, um, and since you've discerned, and since you're just a good friend. Thank you. (laughs) um, Do you have some questions for us? Yes, well, sister, thank you very much for introducing me, having me here today. And it was such a pleasure working on this great project with you. It was, yeah. It was definitely um, a challenge because I've never laid out a book before, but it was such a pleasure to have that opportunity to put this together. And I hope that it reaps much fruit for many young women um, across the country and across the world. better. But, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, and th- as you mentioned, yeah, having discerned um, my own vocation, having discerned even with a specific religious community for a while, um, I think it's safe to say many of us young people really encounter a lot of challenges when it comes to discernment, when it comes to vocation. Um, and while there's a great goodness that the world is so open to us as young people. We have so many lifestyles and careers that the world um, has to offer. We're also bombarded by all of these choices. Yes. And I think maybe before we even get into the specifics about this wonderful new resources is maybe to just kind of get the lay of the land of what's a religious vocation? like. And you as a vocation director, I'm sure can describe that very well, <laughs> better than I ever could. <laughs> Beautiful, Allison, thank you. A religious vocation is one of the vocations that the church teaches. We're all called to a specific vocation, which is our pathway to heaven. We either have a vocation to marriage, in which case we need a spouse, and um, in our case, he would be our completion in the children that God would give us. And that is a vocation that many, many people have. And so even in our vocation discernment retreats, I would say 85 to 90 percent of the young women have that vocation. That might be a little bit high, but in reality, it's probably not. Or it could be a vocation to the single life, which could be consecrated virginity, perhaps, or It certainly could be a vocation to religious life or for a guy to priesthood. And so those vocations are put in our hearts at baptism. And as we mature and grow in self-knowledge, which is very essential for this, and become more the people God made us to be and realize where our heart takes us, what's our expansiveness of our heart, um, we begin to realize one vocation more than the others would fit us. They're all beautiful. Um, but God has a specific one for each one of us. Yeah, and I know even for myself, when I first heard of, um, I probably first heard about religious vocations when I was about 12 years old, and um, I was very blessed to grow up in a a Catholic family, um, very close to the faith, and I was exposed to religious life at a relatively young age. Yeah. And um, and I just remember being so drawn. I think think most people um, who get to know wonderful religious such as yourselves can say that there is a beauty and there's a holiness to that life that we're attracted Mm -hmm. very much attracted to even if Mm -hmm. in our hearts you know I'm Mm -hmm. still trying to live God's will day to day and Mm -hmm. he'll he'll help me find my way but um if Mm -hmm. I am called to marriage even I think Mm -hmm. many people who are even called marriage still see a beauty Uh in every vocation Mm -hmm. um and I as that 12 year old first discovering religious life I was fascinated and Mm -hmm. infatuated by as one could say the, the habit you know the external signs of that vocation and I 
proceeded to have a tab in my, you know, parents' computer that was religious orders. Oh, my goodness. And collected any order I could find with all these oh. different, you know, you had Carmelites, Franciscans, <laughs> nuns who wore pink. Like, who knew that uh-huh. there are pink habits out there? And um, so I had this long list of, you can imagine, probably like hundreds uh-huh. of religious mm-hmm. orders. <laughs> Beautiful. And one might say, as a twelve-year-old, being attracted, you know, that's a, I think, you know, very normal for a young a young child to approach that. But I, I'm guessing that's probably not the way you want to go about discernment. So, what are some common <laughs> misconceptions or mistakes that you you frequently see as we're trying to find our way, trying to find our vocation? What are those mistakes that you often see, and how can we as young people avoid those? Beautiful. Thank you, Allison. One thing that I have to say is you really came from a good family, that they would allow you to blessed. even do this research when you were 12 years old. I don't know if my you... parents were fully aware. I'm sure there was one day they looked at their like search history, and they're like, what What's is going Allison on doing? <laughs> Really, but that you you had that in your heart, and I think that's one thing, too, that I really do want to point out. If we are in the state of grace, we've been baptized, and we've, we go to confession when we need to, and we live with the sacramental life, and we are in the state of grace, that question of what is my vocation according to the eternal divine plan should come to every single young person because that is a natural part of grace to say i made you god's god's lips to ours i made you with a very specific purpose and with a very special love and i want to show you how you will reach the completion of that how your heart was created to find its completion And that is the vocation. And so I think um, what many young people today, as you were saying, um, some of the pitfalls are nobody stops them and ever inserts in their very busy, um, very distracted lives of what's going on in pop culture and what's going on in the media and all this other kind of stuff and says, do you know you have, there's an, you have inside yourself an eternal plan. Are you going to do it? Mm. Are you going to create your own? Do you really want to be happy? Do you want to be fulfilled? Do you want to become the saint God is calling you to? So I think the first problem is nobody stops young people and says that. I think the second problem is there are not many vocation directors out there that really say, if your vocation is marriage, you pray to the to the young woman you pray to St. Saint, to Saint Joseph to find your St. Joseph and you go find him and you go after him in a prudent manner with virtue, with, with goodness and, um, and find who this is and pray for him to be, be virtuous even now. If your vocation is religious life, you get on the internet, you make phone calls, you go visit, you determine the, the top, I always say the top three communities that really interest you. If somebody says there's only one, that's fine too. But if somebody says, can I have like six, seven, eight, 200 did you have on your, <laughs> I'm like, knock them off because you're only going to get yourself more confused and it's going to look an impossible situation to figure out. So I think for these reasons, they might really need some kind of a spiritual director or a really good, solid retreat or a really good, a wonderful resource (laughs) that kind of forces the issue inside the quiet of their own homes without everybody watching. What are you reading? And they can take this to prayer or they can take it into Eucharistic adoration, which is, of course, the best place. Um, And then they can contact me if they wish to and just say help me out um our last last vocation discernment retreat i spent so now it's up to 17 hours on the phone 20 minute integrals with young women all over the world helping them find their vocation the vast majority are marriage but they want to know that and then others are still not quite ready to make their their final decisions they're still praying but at least they've got some more information Others, it's different religious communities, and a very few, perhaps, are ours. But they're saying, I need someone who knows more than I, and who genuinely, I believe, loves me and wants God's will and not somebody else's will, including, I mean, I don't have a will in this. I want God's will. And so if they can find someone like that, but again, I think this book can be an incognito book where people can read and, and really say, could this be me?